Rachel, it's so good to have you on the Jewelry Business Academy podcast today. Thanks so much for joining me. I'm so excited to be here, Robin. Thank you so much. You're such an inspiration to me. And I really, I love, I'm probably like one of the biggest listeners of your podcast, actually. So it's an honor to be on here. Amazing. I know you're one of the top listeners of the podcast. So it's really <laughs> incredible to finally have you on the show. And I'm really excited to chat to you today and for you to share your story with everyone um, because you are building your jewelry business, Radiant Jewels, while you're still in high school. And you've also achieved some other incredible achievements over the past few years. And I just think you have a really really inspiring story and so our listeners are going to really love this and this is also an extra special episode because you've been a part of the Jewelry Business Academy and community for a few months I've been working with you I know you and your business really really well and I just know that you and your story is really going to inspire so many people who want to start their business and think maybe oh I can't do that while I'm in high school and all of that so before we dive in, yeah. do you want to go ahead and just introduce yourself to our listeners and just share a little bit of your background? Yeah, so I'm Rachel Hurt. I live in Austin, Texas. I am 18 years old. And really, my business, like Radiant Jewels, is all about self-love. And I've actually had a long journey with self-love. At age 11, I gave a TEDx talk about self-love and inner beauty that I just applied for on my own, like, my parents didn't even know. I just was like, wow, like, I really want to give one of those because I liked watching them online. And I really loved the idea of giving a speech that could help get like spread my message to other people. And I really just think that's a very powerful thing. So that's what I'm hoping to do with my business, just spread ideas of self-love and self-confidence by creating pieces that help you radiate, hence the name Radiant Jewels. So yeah, I I'm just really looking forward to the future. And I know you brought me on here sort of in the beginning of my journey. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I just love the idea of inspiring self-love and confidence. And then like, again, your inner radiance. Mm, such a beautiful story, Rachel. And I'm so excited to dive even deeper into that. I love what you're creating with Radiant Jewels. Can you share with our listeners how long you've had Radiant Jewels? Because I know we are still in the very early stages of that business. And I just think it's incredible to see what you're doing while you still have all these other things going on. You're still in school. You have a lot of other activities and you're building this business. So how long since you launched Radiant Jewels? So I launched Radiant Jewels this past summer, so the summer of 2022, but I actually have been making jewelry since I was very little, maybe like five years old, with my mother, who is an interior designer, and we would just always make jewelry together. We would wire wrap a lot, so I love wire wrapping, and I do a lot of that in my business, and really just... I have always remembered like admiring jewelry and especially adorning myself in jewelry. Mm -hmm. And so I think that's what really prompted me to create my business this summer. And it was also the mentality of like me knowing that I had so many dreams and wanting to achieve them and then just deciding to start because I, I really want to live my best life. And also I want to inspire others. When I see people on social media, it inspires me and that's something that actually really changed my mindset I remember in middle school and you know we all know middle school can be kind of an insecure time or a time of jealousy and I was telling my dad I was like oh wow like I wish I could be like those people and have a business or do those like amazing things and he was like you can like when you see someone doing something that you want to do, that is just proof that you could be doing it too. So by me stepping into my truest self and starting to build my dream, I hope to also inspire others and help others find that self-love and that radiance and that confidence while I am also finding that as well. Oh, I love that so much, Rachel. And I think that is incredible advice that your dad gave you. You know, whenever you Thank see you. things that people are achieving big milestones, they are building big businesses, they're following their dreams. Don't like, it's very easy for us to step into that comparison game where we're like, oh, they're doing that. I should also be doing yeah. that. Or, oh, I wish I could be doing that. Or, oh, like just go in a different 
thought pattern and to every time you see something that somebody's doing and you would love to do it too be like wow that's proof that what I'm wanting to do is possible like look at that that's incredible and I think that not only helps you but it's just such a powerful mindset to have as you go through life in all areas of life um so I really really love that so you're you're about like six seven months into your business now and So can you share like one piece of advice you'd give to somebody who's listening, who's like, oh, you know, I really want to start my jewelry business, but I'm just waiting for the perfect time because, you know, I talk to so many jewelry business owners every single day. And let me tell you, there are people who wait 10 years thinking about this idea before taking action. There are people who wait five years. There are people who wait like a very, very long time before taking action. And I love that you like came up with this idea and just took action immediately and just didn't let any challenges stand in your way. So what would be one piece of advice you'd give to somebody who's like, I really want to do this, but like now's not the right time. Well, I have actually heard um, this theory that if you have an idea, like three other people in the world have that same idea, like they also really want to do it. And so I think honestly, micro steps is the best the best way to go because if you just do one thing like for me it was creating the Instagram account or buying the website domain like I think those small steps can accumulate and obviously like it starts with just making the jewelry but I really think if you're looking to dive in and create a jewelry business or create a business or just start creating your dream life then really just those micro steps because the accumulation of all of those small actionable steps is what really helps create your business and create your life. Like we spend our lives like through our days, like everything that we end up doing, like that becomes your life. So I think just taking the time out of every day to spend with intention, like I am a strong believer that everyone can make time for anything. Like I feel like even like everyone makes time to go on their phone. And so I feel like just making time to do things that help better your life is really important. And even if it's only five minutes a day or something, like just taking that action every single day. Mm, I love that so much. I totally agree, Rachel. Like I always say this, that a successful business is simply an accumulation of like thousands and thousands of teeny tiny doable steps. Like when you actually break down these businesses, especially a jewelry business, it's just an accumulation of thousands of tiny like one minute two minute tasks and steps and so yeah I love that and I love that you just got started got your Instagram going got your URL built your website and just took action and got started and you know I'd love to chat a little bit about how coaching has supported you over the past few months because you have been in the Jewelry Business Academy and we're still working together and I'd love if you could briefly share your experience of the program for any listeners who are curious about the Jewelry Business Academy. Um, So kind of to start with, do you want to share how you were feeling before we started working together? What made you realize that you were ready to be supported on your business building journey? So I think before I was just kind of new to the whole domain and I really was looking for that support. And it was me investing in myself by deciding to join the Jewelry Business Academy. And I feel like it just helped give me the push like I was like oh I know like I want to post but I'm afraid of what people will think of me like I feel like every one of us has that sort of just comparison deep down in their head of like what will people think of me if I do this and I think being in something that held me accountable and that continues to hold me accountable to do these actions like is very beneficial and I would say that's my favorite part about being in the Julia Business Academy is feeling supported and just having that accountability. And also, Robin, you're one of my favorite parts because I really look up to you and you really inspire me. And so I am definitely someone who wants to lead with kindness and everything I do and just radiate positivity. And I know that can be hard for anyone to do at times, but I just really admire the positivity and the radiance that you lead with. So I would very much like to emulate that. So I feel like being in this community just really helps me, one, be held accountable, and two, just emulate kindness and learn from everyone else as well. Mm, I love that so much. You're so sweet. Um, Thank you for that. That means a lot to me. And 
I'd love to just go back a little bit because you did mention about social media, you know, having that accountability when it comes to posting on social media. And I know now you are a pro when it comes to reels, like your video content <laughs> is so good. It's so effortless. Like you've got really, really good with reels. Um, but I know that wasn't always necessarily the case. So do you remember when you were just getting started, how you felt about showing up on social media? Yeah, I think I felt scared mainly because I was like, wow, like a professional business should have more followers or should look like this. And I realize now like it's not really what it looks like that determines the value of the business. And also, I think the main thing for me was habit stacking, which I know you talk mm-hmm. about a lot and you've talked about here on the podcast, but um, just habit stacking your habits. So for me, um, every morning, I will just take time to record like a two second video during my off period at school and I just record that little video and I show off the jewelry that I'm wearing and that has just helped me consistency really is key and I feel like that is a very even with the micro steps like consistent efforts are what build dream lives they're what build businesses and I think taking the time for yourself every single day and even if it's only five minutes just taking that consistent time out of your day over a long period of time really helps build your dream life. Mm, I love that you shared that actually, because I know a lot of people listening are like, oh, but Rachel doesn't know, like I've got a lot going on in my life and, but you have so much going on. I think out of all the clients, you have the most activities going on and you always prioritize making time for your business on a weekly basis, even with school, even with exams, even with like activities and tennis and all these other things that you have going on. So I love that you recognize, number one, that there's value in even doing five minutes of work. Five minutes is not too little. That's perfect. If all you can do one day is show up for five minutes, do some video content and post it, that's good. That accumulates over time. So I really love that you shared that. And I hope this is helping somebody who's listening, who's like, oh, you know, sometimes I feel like I don't want to sit down to work unless I have an hour. But Sometimes you don't have an hour if life is busy and it's not your full-time job just yet. So um, I really, really love that. And how would you say, like, have you experienced any shifts in your mindset and like in terms of focus and clarity and in terms of knowing what steps you need to be doing over the past few months since joining the academy? Yeah, I would say I've just shifted more to like, wow, like this is what I really want to be doing. Like, I just like love doing it and love making jewelry so I'll even like not do my homework because I'm like wow like I really want to focus on this and I just always make time for it and I think it really helps when you make time for something you love and so I think my mindset has more of just been like I want to help other people find self-love through jewelry and even beyond that like through like spreading positivity and spreading confidence. And so I feel like having this mindset of, wow, I could be helping other people out there. Like Mm -hmm. seeing that even though I just started recently, like I could be influencing people and, and that just is really appealing to me. I really love the idea of being able to have an impact on people. And, you know, social media is like a virtual realm. So you can really like impact people anywhere, no matter where you are. And I think the idea of that, like being able to impact someone globally, just really is amazing. Mm-hmm. Um, for me, I actually have a similar experience with that with my book. So I wrote a book about self-love and inner beauty you know after I gave my TEDx talk like I've just had this this journey of self-love and my book Guardians of the Forest is all about this hornless unicorn venturing through the forest and he gets bullied by the other unicorns because he's the one and only hornless unicorn and he basically learns to love and accept himself for who he is without a horn and that's when he gets his horn and he runs into the ugly duckling along the way He's like, you know, I used to be this ugly duckling, but look at me now, I'm this beautiful swan. So I feel like it's just a journey of self-love. And I love the idea that writing a book, you know, you can sell it anywhere and it can impact people across the world, across the nation. And I feel like with social media, with my book, like I am really enthralled by the idea of being able to impact people's lives from a totally different geographical point. Mm, that's so beautiful and you know what your whenever I go onto your Instagram 
I can't help but feel like lighter and more joyful because your brand your whole brand is radiant and joyful and light and happy and you're spreading so much joy and positivity through everything that you do through your books through your TEDx talk through your jewelry and just through the way that you're showing up online which I think is really important for people to think about is even people who aren't going to buy from you, who aren't buying your jewelry yet, yeah. should be getting value from your brand. And you're doing that really well because your community on Instagram are getting value just by following along because you're not hard selling them. You're building a community in a yeah. space where it's like, hey, even if you're not buying yet, I'm going to help uplift you. I'm going to help raise, raise your vibration. I'm going to help yeah. just bring joy into your life, help give you perspective and all of that. So. I, I really like, love that. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like even um, sharing like that sort of smile or something on my page just really, it makes me feel good. And I don't know. I also choose like the music of how I'm feeling. So maybe I'll choose like a Taylor Swift song where I really like the lyrics. And I don't know, just little things like that, I hope impact and inspire people as well. Yeah, definitely. It all adds up the music, the the um, videos, the content, the photo content, and what you're doing really well is you're creating a feeling around your brand. And so we're selling the feeling and sharing the feeling um, rather just than just focusing on products, which the products are also yeah. dreamy, but you know, you're leading with feeling, which is so important, especially when you want to stand out as a brand um, when there's all these other jewelry businesses out there. So um, I'm also so impressed that you've already written a book. You've done your TEDx <laughs> talk. You're only 18. Um, and I know some people are going to be listening to this and be like, oh, I've always wanted to write a book. Like, how has Rachel done it? How did you just get started? What, like, what would you say is like a piece of advice for someone listening? Like, how should they get started on their book? Well, for me, it was really that driving force of like helping little kids feel that sort of self love and self acceptance from a young age. And I thought, you know, maybe I could subconsciously impact them by having a story about self love in a fun way. And it honestly mm. just started with me writing. Like, I was just writing. And that is a big thing for writers. I know writing can be very hard, but literally just taking time every single day, like making yourself do it. And then eventually you'll find that gold within like all of the dirt that you write. Like there, there's going to be that one like piece that really like clicks and just inspires you to start writing more. And so it just started as me writing. And then I ended up writing more and more. And I found my illustrator on Thumbtack, Ryan Durney, who is extremely talented and his work just brought my book and the whimsicality of my story to life. And I actually have sold 1500 copies now. Mm -hmm. And I donated the proceeds from the first 1000 copies, which was $16,174 to the mm -hmm. Andy Roddick Foundation, which basically is an institution that supports children finding their passions. So Andy Roddick is a tennis player. I'm actually on varsity tennis for my high school as well, but he is a tennis player and he teaches kids how to play tennis through summer camps. And also people teach them how to cook and stuff. And it's this free program where they get to learn and pursue their passions. And it's actually the most diverse school in Austin as well. I think there's like 20 plus different languages there maybe even like 35 is what I'm thinking but it's very I don't know I just really feel like taking the time every single day is what really helped me and that not only like helped foster my love for writing by taking the consistent efforts but it also helped me create a book and now mm -hmm. I have my book on Amazon and in bookstores in this bookstore called book people which we have here in Austin yeah, I just think taking that time every single day, and especially if you're a writer, like writing can be very hard. I know like a lot of writers will probably know that and it just is hard, but taking the time to be like, okay, I'm going to do this, even for five mm. minutes. I, lo I love that so much, Rachel. Like you are so such a good example of someone who takes action and just takes messy action immediately. Like you come up yeah. with an idea, you're like, okay, I'm going to go take action to, yeah. like refine as necessary it's so much easier to go back and refine whatever you've been doing once you've got, so got started than like 
being like, oh, I'm going to wait till it's perfect. Or I have this perfect idea. Like you're like, I'm going to write a book. Let's just get started. Take messy action consistently. That's so and true. then you just go back and refine. And then you get that motivation after you've taken action. So I think yeah. anyone listening to this, take a, a leaf out of Rachel's book and just start embracing taking messy action in your business and just have fun with it. Because it's so clear that everything that you do as well, you have fun with it and it shows. Yeah. Like I it's really so just, clear that you having fun, yeah. you're passionate about it. You love what you're doing um, yeah. and it comes through. I just love like taking action. Like you said, like, even if it's spontaneous, I'll just be like, wow. Like, and I, if I can envision myself doing something and like, might as well start. And I think that also comes from not fully really caring about what people think about me mm. anymore, which I think I would act, honestly argue that that is essential to success in life is not caring what people think about you because there is a plethora of people that want you to succeed in life but there are also some people that don't want you to succeed so I think by just not caring about what others think and doing what's best for you like doing what you want to do really just what you feel like and I think that's like I honestly just kind of do it so I'm like oh I can't take it back now like I just post it on Instagram hi I'm starting a business and so I actually have to follow through with it and I think that's one way of actually holding myself accountable is by taking the action telling someone oh I'm writing a book and then it holds me accountable or posting and being like oh I'm going to start a jewelry business like I think that was a big part of me starting a jewelry business because as humans like we inherently have many interests, we have many curiosities, and we always say, oh, yeah, I want to do this, I want to do this. And it's really easy to let that build up on the back burner for years and years. And it's really just making that phone call, reaching out to that illustrator, because once you do it, there's no going back. Like even yeah. in simpler things, like in my text messages, sometimes it's overwhelming. And I'm sure many business owners and people in general can relate it's overwhelming to reply to messages and stuff. So I'll just start the message by being like, hi, Robin, or hi, friend. Like, I don't know, whoever I'm talking to. And then I send it. So I'm like, oh, well, now I have to reply, you know? And I think it's just a way of holding myself accountable is like, I know I want to have a life where I can impact people and better the world. And I know many people want to do that as well, but it is mm -hmm. so easy to let things build up on the back burner. Like for my book, I had written it, I had it self-published and then I didn't get it on Amazon for the longest time. Like I just got it on Amazon this past summer and it's been written for like five years. So I think just taking the step, like I, for instance, reached out to my illustrator to help me get it published since he's published like 20, 30 books. And so I think, yeah, I think it's really it comes down to accountability. So if you want to hold yourself mm -hmm. accountable, take the small step, just post, be like, hey, this is what I'm doing, or hey, I'm writing a book, and that keeps you accountable. Yeah, I love that. Accountability is massive in business because as yeah. business owners, we have to make so many decisions all the time. So having that accountability from like family, friends, people who know what you're doing and and are there to like support you along the way can make such a difference. And also, as you were saying, learning not to care what other people think, because if you want to be successful in business, you cannot care what people think, because yeah. there is going to be there are going to be people who judge you just because they're thinking, oh, I couldn't start a business. So why does she think she can? And that yeah. can happen. And so I think that the fact that at such a young age, you're already just embracing, like being all Thank in you. on who you are, not letting other people's opinions and thoughts hold you back, not letting exactly. their limiting beliefs hold you back. I think it's incredibly powerful and it's really inspiring. Um, yeah. So I and really I think, love that, Rachel. Thank you. And I think it does go back to what we were talking about at the beginning of the podcast, that sort of jealousy mindset. You're like, oh, she's mm -hmm. doing it. Like, I'm so jealous. Like, I want my life to look like that. Well, guess what? You can have your life look like that. Mm -hmm. And so I think people who tear others down just don't realize like that I could do that too. And this is just proof. And so yeah. I want to be the proof for those people. Yeah, 100%. Um, okay, so what would you say has been one of the biggest lessons that you've learned since joining the Jewelry Business Academy? Um, I would say one of the biggest lessons is that you don't have to do it alone. Like, even mm. if you want to seem like a girl boss or, or just a boss, you know, in general, even if you want to seem like 
you're just this powerful person. Like, you don't have to do it alone. And honestly, I don't know if you've read Outliers by Malcolm Gladwell, but he says, like, everything is about connections. Like, people, like, the self-made millionaire, like, that it's not fully self-made. Like, you have help from other people, and you get, like, connections from other people. Like, I think it was Steve Jobs grew up in California, like, right next to this guy who had all of these, like, technology like all this technology equipment in his garage so he was able to learn and like just be able to foster his passion like through that connection and it was Mm -hmm. that that led to him creating apple and so i feel like having connections and learning that you're not alone like for me i can have you and i can go to you to ask questions just because you want to be an independent person and fulfill your dream life doesn't mean you have to do that alone like you can have people supporting you on the side and I think really that community was what like surprised me the most I was like wow this is amazing like you can have a community of so many people around you and I just really admire that and I think that is definitely one of the biggest things I've taken out of the Jewelry Business Academy and that I've learned is that you don't have to do it alone and it's Mm -hmm. honestly no one can do it alone like everyone has people supporting them and connecting them to other people who might help them along their journey. Oh, I think that you said that so beautifully, Rachel. I totally agree with you. Um, I think it's easy for people going into business to think, oh, I'm going to do this alone. I want to like be like the one who gets these big goals. And the reality is like being part of a community makes it more fun, makes it more sustainable, gives you that support. And I've done it both ways. I've done business without a community and I've done it with a massive Mm -hmm. community And just the difference in not only like how I feel in business, but like the results that you get, everything, it's, it's a very different experience. So I love that you've shared that. And, you know, I think as well, how would you um, share to someone who's listening to this and is like, oh, but I don't know if I want to be in a community of other jewelry business owners, because they're going to steal my ideas. (laughs) What would you say to that after seeing the other jewelry business owners in the academy? I don't know. I would say that everyone, like the core purpose of why you're doing your business is different for everyone. And one thing you've actually taught me very well, Robin, is how the main thing differentiating any business is the person behind the business, the face behind the brand. And that's why you always, you know, inspire and encourage people to show their face and let them be the face of their brands. Because Mm -hmm. like everyone has their own purpose. Like for me, I want to help spread self-love. And I think the more the merrier, honestly, is the mindset that you that you go with it. Like everyone can help. There's room enough for everyone to help change the world for the better. And the more people changing the world for the better, like that's great. And so mm-hmm. I think just having that sort of mentality where like, no, like we all want to, we're all on the same page here. We all want to share our purpose through jewelry. We all want to help better the world. I think that is a really big one. Mm, I love that. Um, and yeah, you know, it's so true because, people who are wanting to start their jewelry business they're often going into it for very similar reasons sometimes and it's that you're often you can make such good friends that that are also Mm -hmm. jewelry business owners it doesn't have to be like oh they're my competitor you can be really good friends with other people because you're actually on a similar journey so you can relate to so much of the things that they're going through um but I'd love to hear now I have a couple more questions for you, but I'd love yeah, to hear like, what are some of the lessons that you've learned in your first six, seven months of business that you think like where you are now, like that you had known when you got started? Well, I never really considered how many pop-ups I would do. And just for me, the one of the main parts about like the jewelry industry and about the pop-up community is that I get to meet other vendors. Like I really enjoy meeting other vendors. So I think at the beginning I would have been scared or I would have been like, oh, what if they don't think I'm a real business? But now like I love like supporting small businesses and local businesses, but especially like those small businesses. So I feel like just having that community of vendors and also meeting the different customers, like it really allows me to share my purpose and my message. And I would I honestly think the pop-ups, like I had no clue how many pop-ups I would do, but I feel like it's really just beneficial. And then they follow Mm -hmm. you on Instagram and you both support and uplift each other. And just like what we were talking about with Julia Business Owners, like you can help simultaneously uplift people. 
Mm. And then word of mouth, like you can connect them to other people. So I just, yeah, I think I never realized how many amazing people or amazing businesses I would meet through jewelry. Like that just didn't occur to me. I was like, oh, wow, I'm just going to make jewelry. And I just like couldn't fathom like where it would take me as far as connections and being able to meet so many amazing people. Oh, that brings us back to community. And Mm -hmm. I love that you actually shared that because that's something a lot of people kind of don't always think about. But it is true. Like when you go into your business and into jewelry, you are opening your world up to all these other makers and they're making jewelry, they're making other products. And it's just such a beautiful, supportive community. Um, And so if somebody's listening to this and they're like, I don't, I am scared of going to events and meeting people and like being the business owner. And I don't know if I'm even a real business. What would you give them as a piece of advice? Well, I think it's to remember what people have told you. Like, I think, and what you tell yourself, like to remember your true purpose by what others have told you. Like some people for me have been like, oh, wow, what you're doing is amazing. So I just channel that when I go into anything else. And actually that goes back to how I created the name for my business, Radiant Jewels. So I was in school and um, we were doing like yearbooks or we weren't. And someone wrote me a yearbook note and they were like, you are a radiant beam of energetic and compassionate sunlight that never fails to inspire optimism and positivity. And I just really love that. And I've like, I have it memorized now because that fostered the name Radiant Jewels. Like that is why I chose Radiant because I feel like your radiance is just like an amazing thing. And me being able to share my radiance and share my truest self with other people is the driving force behind what keeps me going because I just love the idea of that. And I love the idea of inspiring that radiance within other people too. So when I go into pop-ups or events, I'm like, wow, this is an opportunity to smile at that person that maybe had a bad day. Like you really don't know what's going on in someone's lives or what emotion they're feeling. But I mm-hmm. like, we do know that people feel similar emotions. Like people are sad a lot of times and it's behind the scenes and you just really don't know about it. Like if you think about all the times you've been sad, Like, I think just thinking that and then being like, wow, now I could go turn it around for them maybe and make their day, give them a smile. And I just think that I really love the idea of that. And so I go Mm -hmm. into it with the purpose of my business being wanting to spread radiance and wanting to spread that positivity, smile at someone or just be like there for people. I don't know, just like having my presence in the community really makes me feel amazing and makes me feel like I'm capable of influencing people and impacting them Mm, I love that so much I think that is one of the most beautiful things I've ever heard somebody say about somebody to say that you're so radiant I think that's and it it is a hundred percent you um so I just love that and I really love that you are driven by impact and when you're putting content out there you're thinking of how is this going to make other people feel which is like it makes it number one easier to show up and it makes it Mm -hmm. make sure that the content that you're putting out there is like uplifting other people it's always focusing on impact and you do that really really well Rachel um so I'd love to know what would you say to someone who's listening to this and they know that they need more clarity and focus and structure and accountability in moving their business forward but they feel really anxious about making the investment in themselves and their business well I feel like it's really important to invest in yourself because again it's another way of holding yourself accountable Like, I really believe in accountability, like we've talked about. And I feel like investing in yourself, it's like, oh, wow, I did it. Like, now I actually have to follow through with it. Like, I feel like it's a great way of being able to just, like, count on yourself in a way. And, like, for me, I want to be able to influence others. And I think, honestly, every business wants to be able to influence others, whether it's to be their truest selves or to radiate confidence and self-love, like in my business, or something completely different. Like, I think every business wants to influence people. And so I think just remembering why you're doing it and being like, wow, there could be people out there like me or for when I'm talking about this, like the middle school version of myself who Mm -hmm. had no idea what I was capable of and just felt very insecure and anxious about doing anything because I was like, 
wow, like, what if everyone's right? Like, what if I can't ever do anything like meaningful? But now I'm like, seeing like looking retrospect you know at myself in the past I'm like wow like she didn't know like what she was capable of if she just could be your truest self so I feel like remembering why you're doing it and why you want to help influence others and it's actually Mm -hmm. funny my I'm a senior in high school so we have I'm going to Tulane in the fall in New Orleans but I have um every senior school has this thing where they like get voted for something And my grade voted me to be most likely to become an influencer, which I would love to be an influencer (laughs) and like influence that positivity into people's lives. So I feel Mm -hmm. like just really staying on track with your purpose, like I feel like that can really help. Yeah, 100%. And helping other people find themselves too. I totally agree. I think having, when you invest in yourself in any way, whether it's like committing to tennis lessons or getting coaching or whatever it is, it forces you to invest that time and energy and and really do things which otherwise may have been uncomfortable or that you may have put off for weeks or months and actually like be like, okay, no, I'm going, I'm all in, I'm doing this. Um, Mm -hmm. So I really love that. Do you have any other lessons from our coaching together? Maybe one or two lessons that you think would be helpful for somebody listening to this? Um, let me think. I feel like really just habit stacking has helped me a lot. And Mm -hmm. you talk about that a lot, like habit stacking and how it's very transformational because it's essentially doing what we were talking about earlier and taking five minutes out of your day for something, but associating it with something else. Like making your bed, for instance, is a keystone habit where it makes it easier to form other habits. So I feel like if you have maybe right when you get home for the day or at 10 o'clock in the morning like right after you eat breakfast or work out like whatever you do I think um associating other things with that is really beneficial and I never really looked at it that way I was like oh I'll just like make time for it like I'll write it down on a to-do list a checklist and I'll get to it eventually but what happens is that checklist just often stays there and I never Mm -hmm. really make the time for it but instead I could look at it through a different light and I could be like well maybe after I come back from tennis, then I'll take 20 minutes to do this. Or every day, for instance, me in my off period, which I have in the morning, third period, I just like listen to podcasts. Often I listen to your podcast and I just record some content and I just think about how I want to set my intention for the day. So habit stacking has really helped me and I make sure to use that time in my day. Mm -hmm. Most of the time thinking about jewelry, my jewelry business, or if not, I associate it with different tasks. So I feel like that is really beneficial for anyone. And I think it's also essential to spend like five minutes every day on you doing something that you know is going to benefit your future self. Mm, that's really good advice and you know that I'm obviously a huge fan of habit stacking and I love that you you take these concepts and you actually go and take action and immediately like implement them into your life and you're really really good at that I know you messaged me the other day you're like oh I just did this like I'm habit stacking um this and this activity I can't remember what they were Um, but you're so good at being like, okay, I'm going to do it. Let's just go like no excuses. And you just make things happen, even with the limited time that you have. Um, so what would you say is one piece of advice you have for a high school student who's maybe a few years younger than you, maybe same age, who would love to start their own jewelry business or other type of business? Um, But they're like, oh, but I'm still in school. Can I even start a business? Like, am I worthy of starting a business? Am I good enough to start a business? What would you say to them? You can really make time for anything. Like, I am a strong believer that no matter what you do, you can always make that time. So I feel like no matter how many classes you have, like, you can even take or no matter the hardness of all of your classes. Like, I did, like, all AP classes junior year and right now. And so I feel like just having that time and just telling yourself, like, like everyone makes time to go on their phone for a bit. And if you mm-hmm. look at, if you go into settings and go at your daily screen time, like, it'll be a lot. And then you'll be like, wow, I have a lot of time that I could be reallocating and redistributing to other things. So I think just allocating that time to different tasks is really what's going to help start your business. And then the worthiness aspect inside of it, I feel like 
it really just goes back to like, what do you want your life to look like? Mm. Like, yes, it's fun to focus on other things, but like at the end of the day, what do you want your life to look like in the future? Like you might as well get started now. Like this is honestly my mindset when I was 11 years old and gave my TEDx talk. I was like, you know, I really want to be like a motivational speaker someday. And I really want to do that. So might as well get started now. Like that's mm-hmm. honestly my mindset. It's like, I know what I want to do with my life. I know I want to spread self-love. And I know I want to, con- like right now, I know I want to continue doing that in the future. So I might as well start now. And that led me to write my book which I have here, like, I just, I feel like that mindset of starting it now, like not waiting till the perfect time, because no perfect time exists. And I think that is definitely one of the biggest fallacies in society is that, oh, there'll be a perfect time. Like, for instance, in the corporate world, everyone like retires at the age of 60. That's the average age of retirement, maybe even higher than that. But there is no perfect time to get started on your dream life. And I think we only live one life and our years are so limited that just taking the time, even if it's only a little bit of time each day, as we've said throughout this podcast, can really help you build your dream life. And it's like, mm. you might as well get started now. Like you 100%. might as well. And it's not too late. Also not too late. Also, like no matter what age you are, like you still have like so much left to give to the world. And if you want to give that back to the world, then you might as well start doing everything that will lead you to your dream life and lead you Mm -hmm. to impact and change the world for the better, which that is my biggest goal in life is to change the world for the better through everything I do. So yeah. That's so beautiful, Rachel. And you know what I really love is I love that advice that you shared and just getting started and just taking that mm-hmm. those first few steps. And yeah. also what you've done so well is you immediately embody what it is that you're wanting. You oh, and, and you. you're saying that you want to be a motivational speaker when you're older. You're already mm-hmm. a full on motivational speaker. You already <laughs> embody that. You're already motivating. Every time I see your content, every time we chat, you're you've just you've embodied that whatever it is that you're wanting and you already are a motivational speaker you're just building more platforms but you're already a speaker you're already motivating people you're already a jewelry business owner you've already written a book you know and yes not you've combined that taking action with mindset work which is so 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 powerful so yeah and I I love that I feel like I feel like also I have like this sort of longing to do so many different things to change the world. So sometimes I'm like, wow, there's not enough time to do all I want to do to change the world. Mm -hmm. And then other times I'm just sitting there doing nothing. But so, you know, it's a balance, but I just feel like really taking that time to be like, wow, like I want to change the world. I might as well start now because you never know what's going to happen. And you just might as well use your days, like your days become your life. So you might as well fill your day up with meaningful, meaningful actionable steps and also things that fill you up with joy and happiness and I think focusing on yourself too is really that's honestly like something we haven't touched on too much that so far is like focusing on yourself and bettering yourself and like loving yourself first so in my book like he has to learn Auburn the hornless unicorn has to learn to love and accept himself for who he is without a horn before he gets his horn and it's like a lesson from the guardians of the forest which is the title of my book guardians of the forest to like they're these oak trees and they teach him to love himself as you are so I think before you get your horn before you get all of your desires and all of your dream life you really need to love yourself like Mm -hmm. in middle school I really focused on bettering myself because I didn't really have too many friends in middle school and I was like wow like if everyone likes me I shouldn't like me then I was like no like if everyone doesn't like me like I should like myself like I should learn to love myself and I have nothing to lose so I just started Mm -hmm doing things that filled me up with happiness. Working out was a big goal of mine to like be really fit. So I started working out all the time and eating healthier and just writing. That's when I wrote my book about self-love and bullying and like just about finding that confidence. So I feel like really caring for yourself and loving yourself as you are for who you are before you decide to grow and change for the better is really honestly imperative to success. Mm, I completely agree with you and you said that so beautifully um it is you, you you like prioritizing yourself your energy loving yourself for where you are right now as you're 
becoming whoever it is you're wanting to become is so important and it's one of the yeah. biggest challenges that entrepreneurs struggle with and even like seven figure entrepreneurs there's a lot of mindset work that people have to go mm-hmm. through and it comes down to like do you feel worthy of what you're doing do you love yourself for who you are as you're building this business as well um so I love that you shared your journey because honestly anyone listening to this even if they're way out of high school and in their 60s is going to really um, be inspired by what what you just shared Um, and I'd love for you to quickly share a little bit more about Gems for Joy because I know you started this club at school and the purpose was to make jewelry with school children and senior citizens so do you want to just share a little bit about that because I think this is really incredible that you had the initiative to do this and then you actually went and created it and launched it. Yeah, so I wanted to implement self-love within my community. And for me, giving back really makes me feel good. Like whenever I'm feeling sad, I will give back to people. Like I'll go out and get gifts or like make kind little thoughtful things for people. So I really feel like giving back can have a tremendous impact on a person's own happiness level. And I feel like Mm -hmm. that's like lots of studies show that giving back and making others feel happy makes you feel happy inside. So I really just wanted to help little kids feel happy. And yeah, so we've gone to lots of elementary schools and worked with lots of elementary students at Andy Roddick Foundation is one of them. Cedar Creek Elementary, like a bunch of different places, we've made bracelets with them. And often what we've seen, like this is the club I founded, and often what we've seen is like little kids will make bracelets, they'll make one for themselves and they'll make one for their mom or their dad or their siblings. And I think it's just a really sweet way of giving back and like seeing these little kids like do something generous by making something for someone else. Like oftentimes the the bracelets they make are for their family and they might not even make one for themselves or they I don't know. It's just a really magical thing. And I love seeing that and working with kids. And I just feel like it's just a really amazing feeling. And it's an amazing way to get in touch with myself and my dreams, but also help people because Mm -hmm. maybe littler versions of myself, because when I was little, like I would have loved stuff like that. And I really do think I am an accumulation of like all those people helping me when I was little, like all those people, for instance, um, some of my babysitters would tell me magical like fairy tales like I would be like tell me a story and they would make up a story and that helped foster my love for creative writing or my parents would read me books every single night like when I was little and that made me love writing and my mom would make jewelry with me so I feel like just showing kindness towards other people can really not only fill you up inside but also spread that love so gems for joy um, mm-hmm. is my jewelry club and it's called gems for joy like jewelry that creates joy and I think that's the main purpose is just to create joy within members various members of the community and I feel like just bringing that little those little pockets of happiness into their life really fulfills me and really satisfies like everyone else in my club as well Mm, so beautiful Rachel honestly you're you're so inspiring (laughs) I don't think anyone can listen to this and not be like wow you know what I am gonna embrace every day like Rachel does I am gonna find like the joy in every day and approach everything with this energy like wow what can I do today who can I impact how can I like radiate that that joy and that radiance and positivity how can I help the world today because that's the energy you come at every single day with all the time and I just think it's it's so inspiring and it's so uplifting to listen to um yes I know we're coming to the end but I have a quick question for you what would you Mm -hmm. say is one of the highlights of your entrepreneurial journey so far I noticed that once I created a business a lot of people started coming to me like for instance I'm in my school's newspaper and my school's like magazine like they started like coming to me and I was like wow and like people just in my community like started recognizing me which I never even thought that was possible like I would just be going to the bathroom school and someone would be like oh I love your necklace and I'd be like oh thank you I made it and they're like oh yeah I know I follow you like I saw it on your story and I it just makes me like feel happy to like know like, wow, like, I actually am really making a difference, like, even, like, no matter how big or small, like, even if it's not on, like, a billion, like, person scale, I feel like making a difference in the lives of others is something that's really a core value to me, and also, like, 
I'm Jewish and in the Jewish community, like there's a saying, saving one person is saving is like saving the entire world. So I feel like Mm -hmm. even if I can help one person or even if I can like help a few people feel happy, then I don't really care about the people who are negative towards me because there obviously is a lot of there are a lot of people that don't like it. And like like I said, like they're not mean people. They're just people who are lost and haven't realized, oh, I could be doing that too. Or they're people mm-hmm. who are unhappy with their lives. Like me in middle school, like I was unhappy with my life. And then I took action and went around and like viewed it differently. I was like, wait, like I actually have the potential to change my life. And so I feel like noticing and realizing that one day you can make a difference. And for me, knowing that I can make a difference has been just really a driving force and it has motivated me so much and also brought so much happiness and joy to my life like I really I really love the idea of having a purpose and starting to find my purpose by helping others and also mm-hmm. just helping myself and adorning people in beautiful jewels and real gemstones like those are my favorite things to work with are like pink opal strawberry quartz um just gemstones like that amethyst stuff like that I really I really love it yeah, your collection is so, so dreamy. And we'll Thank share you. it on Instagram. We'll be linking your Instagram and that. But yeah, anyone listening, Thank head over you. to our Instagram and you'll be able to actually see the photos. And we are going to link your book as well in the show notes, Guardians. Um, oh, I've lost the name. Of the here. Forest. Guardians, Guardians of, of the, the Forest. forest. And we are going to link it for anyone listening who's like really, really inspired. I think it's a beautiful book for anyone of any age, to be honest. It's just a really beautiful motivational story. And it's such like beautiful images, like the book itself. I wish everyone could see, but Rachel's held it up a couple of times. It is a dreamy book. So it's a really wonderful gift as well for people. Um, And there's 12 family members. There's 12 double spread illustrations in it. So there's 12 like double spread pages of illustrations that are just really whimsical. And like you just said, like it is a children's book, but really anyone or I feel like a lot of people know, you know, have like nieces or nephews. So I feel like, I don't know, that's really what I want to do with my book is help like subconsciously impact the minds of children and be like, wow, like I should love myself. Like, I don't know. I just feel like that would be an amazing thing. Yeah, no, I I totally agree. And I really, I love that. But I'd love to ask if there's another book that you recommend all entrepreneurs read, if they could only read one. Is there any book that's really impacted you? I love the book Untamed by Glennon Doyle, because I feel like, so I also listen to Glennon Doyle's podcast, We Can Do Hard Things. And I actually have that little quote taped up on my mirror because it's really like a powerful message and a powerful reminder. And that book, like I really believe that, like we've taught, like we've touched on, finding yourself and finding that self-love within yourself, loving yourself first is key and imperative to success and creating your dream life and this book really like helped like I I honestly love this book I didn't even want to finish it because of how much I loved it I was like oh no it's too good to finish like I want to keep like reading it and stuff so I feel like that book just really helps you unleash your truest self and it just it's very inspiring to want to live your dream life Mm, I love that book too so I'll definitely add that to the show notes for anyone listening but Rachel you've shared so much with us you have definitely inspired our listeners I know that for sure Um, and to wrap up our chat I'd love to ask you one last question Mm -hmm. what has been the biggest lesson you've learned since starting your jewelry business Mm, I think just perseverance maybe has been the biggest lesson and also just like letting your true self actually perseverance like like continuing no matter what I think and that consistency but mainly just like being your true self like people love authenticity and someone out there and many people out there will love you for who you are for your authentic self and you don't have to hide yourself or mask yourself like a lot of times like I'm a very bubbly person so a lot of times people are like oh this is just like immature like you know but no like I just want to be my truest self. And I Mm -hmm. really like, I love the people that like love me for it, you know? So I just feel like there are lots of people who will admire your authentic self and you don't need to like be afraid to be who you are just because some people will judge you or some people won't like it. Like you will be happier at the end of the day by not masking yourself, not masking your colors and just letting your radiance shine. 
Mm, beautiful. I love that. But thank you so much for being here today, Rachel, mm. and for sharing your story and sharing, as I said, so much inspiration and your energy, I know is just going to come through the podcast as well and just uplift thank our listeners. You so much. Um, and I know a lot of people are going to be feeling really inspired and they're going to want to follow along and connect with you on your entrepreneurial journey. So where can our listeners find you and how can they support you? So my Instagram is at Radiant Jewels Co. And then my website is RadiantJewelsCo.com. And my book is on Amazon. If you just type in Guardians of the Forest book by Rachel Hurt or something like that. And then also, yeah, I don't know. I guess that's it. Radiant Jewels Co. is my Instagram. And that is where I post all of my little videos and stuff. Amazing. We'll link all of those in the show notes for anyone listening. So you can go ahead and connect with Rachel on her journey. And we are going to be bringing Rachel back in a couple of months to hear the updates because we're in the early couple of months of her business. And we're going to bring you back a couple of months um, from now to share your updates and share the growth and share the lessons. Um, So I'm really looking forward to that. I'm really looking forward to seeing all the fun milestones that you're going to hit over the next few months. Um, But thank you so much for being here, Rachel. This has been such a fun combo. Thank you so much, Robin. I am so happy to be here. I admire you so much as a person and I hope that I can help inspire other people. Yeah, be sure to connect and yeah, thank you for having me. Such a pleasure.